Hi, boys and girls. Is it Friday already? Wow, that week went by like that. Um, I hope you've had a great week and you've learned a lot about math and the ocean and reading and writing. Uh, after today's math lesson, you're going to know all about pictographs. They're also called pictographs. Um, you're going to know what a picture graph looks like, the parts of a pictograph. You'll be able to look at data on the pictograph and answer questions about it and compare the data on the graph, which is all very important skills that you will use for the rest of your life. Isn't that so cool? Because I told you before, everybody uses graphs. People use all kinds of graphs all the time in their jobs, in their daily life. So it's so important to know. So a uh, little bit of review. Last time I read you this cute book, The Great Graph Contest. And we talked about lots of different kinds of graphs. Remember, they showed us um, like this one. Remember the very first one he said that started the whole contest? Do my friends like mud? And there was pictures of mud. This is a picture graph, right? A picture graph or pictograph. Kind of like this one that I showed you at the end of that lesson, right? In this case... All the mud is the same, right? All the pictures are the same, but sometimes a picture graph also has different pictures. So it can be either way. But in any case, um, you have to look at the picture. Usually it stands for one, but sometimes the key might say it stands for two or five or ten, right? So you always have to look at the key. So picture graphs we talked about, or pictographs. We also talked about bar graphs, right, that can go vertical, up and down, right? Um, and, right, we said this cookie one, I said, even though it could kind of be like a picture graph, it kind of reminds me of a bar graph because just like the bar graphs here, right, just like the bar graphs here, they're all the same size. The cookies are all the same size which is the same about a bar graph, right? They stack up on top of each other, and if they're all the same size, it's easy to see what's the most. Like, I think chocolate chip cookies were the favorites, and in this case, what color is the favorite? Good yellow, right? So that is a bar graph, a vertical bar graph. You can also do another kind that we'll talk about in a little bit. And then, of course, remember this one. Do you remember what this one is? A Venn diagram, right? Because all the swimsuits in this circle had flowers. All of the swimsuits in this circle had bugs on them. And where they overlap or intersect is they had both, right? And um, we did that in yesterday's story time, if you listen to my thing, right? I said teachers use Venn diagrams all the time, right? It's very useful for teachers. And then, of course, we had with the butterflies, we had a circle graph or a pie chart, right? And just like all the other graphs, right, it helps us to get, all graphs help us to get information quickly and compare the data on the graph, right? So it's very easy to see that purple was the least common butterfly color. And orange was the most common color butterfly, right? Just like in here, right? So you can tell what's the most common in this. Good, red. What's the least common? Blue, right? And we can look at like something like this. Like say you're going on vacation in June and you don't know what to pack, right? So you might go to the Weather Channel and look and see um, maybe, and they would have a key that the red would be sunny days and maybe rainy days, cloudy, partly cloudy, and snowy, who knows, right? And then it would help you know how to pack. So circle graphs are really, really helpful for that. And then finally, I lost my place. Oh, last one. Even though this has pictures on it, right? I told you when I read the story, it's just kind of like a bar graph. It looks like this one, just like our cookie one went horizontal. 
This uh, vertical, I mean, this one goes horizontal. Do you see how it looks the same? Because these are all the same. They're like little bars, right? It looks like bars of gold or bars of chocolate, right? And if you really love chocolate, what would be your, what would you really want, right? The greatest one. You'd want the green one, right? So, just like a bar graph can go vertical, it can also go horizontal. Even if there's pictures, I said, this is more like a bar graph. Usually we color in a bar graph, but there. So all of those different types of graphs that you learned about. And we're going to practice um, a lot of them, right? But today I said, after today's lesson, you would know all about pictographs or picture graphs, right? So that's what we're going to practice today. I'm so excited. So one of my favorite is picture graphs. And it's easy to remember that it's called a picture graph or pictograph, right? They both have the pick in them. It's because they're pictures, right? In this case, there's pictures of different shapes. So maybe the title of this was, what's your favorite shape? Because remember, the purpose of a graph when a scientist makes a graph, it's to record his information, right? We want the information to be clear, that we can look at it and get the information just like that and compare it where you don't have to read a whole bunch of stuff. And that's why graphs are so helpful to us because they give us the information fast and it's so organized, right? So the title of this graph may have been, what is your favorite shape, right? And then it's easy to see that the most favorite shape was what? Good, triangles, right? And what is the least favorite shape? Circles, right? So, picture graph is a, or pictograph, uses pictures to show data that has been collected. Remember, data is just information. It's right. We took a survey. We asked people, what's your favorite shape? And every time they gave us an answer, that was data. That was information that we could use to show the results of our survey, right? So every single one of these shapes on our pictograph or picture graph stands for some data, some information that somebody gave us. All right, um, looking at another pictograph, right? Um, just like bar graphs, pictographs can go horizontal. They can go side to side, right? And this graph was called our favorite pet. So they must have asked people, what's your favorite pet? And you can see, look, it says, See, I told you that the key at the bottom, right? Picture graphs, pictographs usually don't have numbers, right? They have a title, right? And they have labels, right? So we know what our choices were, right? Snake, fish, cat, dog, those are all of our labels. Um, picture graphs also have a key that says what each one stands for. I told you most of the time it stands for one, but sometimes if it said like key equals 10, that means each of these pictures would stand for 10 animals, 10 pets, right? So we'd have to count by tens to get our answer. But this key says each animal equals one, right? So each dog, each cat, each fish, each snake equals one. They don't have to put all those, right? Because I told you, sometimes in a picture graph, it's the same picture. It might be one dog that stood for everything, but the key just means that each shape, right, or each animal, or each picture, no matter what it looks like, stands for one in this case, right? So... Um, how, what is the most popular pet? Good, dog, because how many dogs are there on our graph? Remember, each dog stands for one. Good, did you say five? Of course you did, you're so smart. And what was the least popular, or the least favorite pet? Good, fish, it only had how many? Show me with your fingers. Good, two. It only had two, right? And we can also compare with our picture graph, right? Or pictograph. Um, did we have more cats or dogs? Yeah, we had more dogs. We can compare how many more, right? Remember we do this in class? Partner, 
partner, partner. Oh, who doesn't have a partner? This is the first one that doesn't have a partner, so we can count from there. One, two, so it has two more. What if I said, did you have more snakes? Were more snakes the favorite or more cats? Hmm, let's see. Partner, partner, partner. Oh, look, they're the exact same. So our picture graphs really help us to compare information quickly. What are its parts? The title, the labels, the pictures, of course, and our key. A good picture graph has all of those parts to make it really easy to read. All right, um, so that was the horizontal one. This is the vertical one, up and down, right? And you can see it is, has the exact same information. We just went up and down with it. See? I'll scoot back so you can see them both. Does it still have a title? Check. Does it still have labels? Check, right? Labels. Does it still have a key? Oh, yep, on the side there, right? So it has the, the axes, but those are big words. You don't need to know that. So yes, they're the same. Whether they go horizontal or side to side or vertical up and down, a picture graph or pictograph has the same parts. All right, so are you ready to make our own picture graph? All right, so here's the deal. I want to know of these choices. Okay, because sometimes when you're asking a question for a, uh, a survey, you can only give so many choices, right? Because or else your, your graph could be so big you couldn't even graph them. There'd be too much information on it to even be helpful, right? So a lot of times when you ask a question, you give the people choices when you survey them, right? So this is my question for you. Which farm animal do you like best? And here's your choices. Pig, cow, chick or chicken, sheep or horse. I'll tell you again, okay? Pig, cow, chicken, sheep or horse. Go ahead and tell me. I'm going to try to get as many as I can. Count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Tell me. Okay. Good. Making some notes here. All right. Wait, can you guys tell me one more time? Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. All right. Still making some notes. All right, okay, so I have to get my picture graph ready. So while I'm doing that, I want you to stand up and do what I'm saying. We're going to get our wiggles out, right? And while I'm getting my graph ready based on what you told me, right, I need you to run in place, right? I'm put on my phone, doing my pictures. Okay, okay, march, 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 knees really high. Keep going. All right, now I want you to do jumping jacks until I tell you to stop. I'm almost done. I just got a couple more things to do. All right, and now can you do squats for me? Remember when your bottom goes down, right? Do squats for me. All right, I'm almost done. All right, how about stretch so high to toe touches, right? Probably do five and then I'll be ready to go. Stretch so high, toe touches one, go. Mm -hmm. Yep, alrighty. Okay, good job. Welcome back. You know what? I realized I have our graph ready to go, but I don't have anything to write my answers with. So, I'm going to pause for one second, and I'm going to hope that it comes back. All right, and back. 
Okay, it's probably nothing for you. Okay, I got my expo. Okay, so I have my graph all ready to go. Okay, so let's see if I have all the parts of a picture graph. Do you see your answer choice up there? I think I got everybody's. Oh no, I did the very best I could. Right, go ahead and point to where yours is. Yeah, did I get it? All right, good. Okay, so remember, what is our picture graph or pictograph need? It needs a title, right? So here's my title. Which farm animal do you like best? Right, so sometimes your title can be a question. Uh, we could have called it favorite farm animal, right? Doesn't matter as long as it has a title, right? And let's see. Do I have labels? I do. I have labels and pictures. I have pig, cow, chicken, sheep, horse. Good. So I have my labels on there. Um, do I have pictures? Do I have pictures to represent? Yeah, I do. Right? So are my all my pictures the same or are they different? Did I use like all mud puddles or did I use different animals? Yeah, that's right. I use different animals. So when you make to use different size animals or different animals, even if they're different size, you have to make sure that you line them up, right? See how my horses kind of overlap? That's because they're a little bit bigger, but I need to make sure that this one, when I can compare my partners, then it lines up, right? So when you make a graph, that's really important that your pictures fit the picture graph. If you don't have a bar, bars to color in, right? You got to make sure that you line them up so they're correctly. Leave enough space. So one, two, three, four ends at the same place as this four. One, two, three, four, right? Did I do it right? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thanks. I did my very best. Okay. So yes, so we have our title. We have our labels. We have our pictures, different pictures. Oh, what am I missing? What's the last thing it needs? Let's look and see. Compare it to this one. What is my graph missing? Oh, yeah, right? I need my key. So down at the bottom here, I'm going to put key. And I'm going to, oh, don't make fun of my, I'm going to have to draw my chick really easy. Oh, I'm going to do a, a, a sheep because that's easy and fluffy. So there's my sheep. I gotta get his little legs. Now don't laugh because I did it fast. Okay, don't make fun of Mrs. Gibbs. All right, so I have my key. So one animal, right? Each picture equals one. All right, good. So what's really helpful, even though, um, even though it doesn't have the totals, right? You don't need numbers on a picture graph. I always say it's helpful to write the totals at the end, right? But we'll do that in a second. First of all, I want to know which one, looking at my pictures, which was the most favorite farm animal? Yeah, you guys liked the cow the best. See, because it's the farthest one. It's easy to see. <gasps> Which animal did you guys like least? Right, the sheep. He just has one. <gasps> did you guys like more chicks or horses? Did more people choose chicks or chickens or horses? Good. More people chose horses, right? I can see because this one, if I go to the end and I bring my finger, that chicken doesn't make that, does it? No, that shows that there's more. If I wanted to know how many more, do you remember what I do? That's right. I see who has a partner. He has a partner. He has a partner. He has a partner. Oh. And then, oh, well, I should have started with the horse, right? Because they had more. So let's go like this. Partner, partner, partner. Oh, no partner. Sometimes if you have a ruler or a piece of paper, too, you can just say, oh, let's see. Let's go to the first one. Partner, partner, partner. Oh, and then you see everybody there has a partner. And then you go, how many don't have a partner? 
just one, right? So what can I tell you? Very easy to compare information on a graph. This is our first picture graph that we made together in distance learning, and I am so proud of you. You learned so much about picture graphs. You learned what it needed. It needs a title, and it needs labels. It needs pictures, of course. You can't have a picture graph or pictograph without pictures. How would you read your data? Right? And of course, it needs a key that that graph didn't have, so I had to make one. So now I said, even though you don't need it, because the point of a graph, right, is to get information quickly. So let's just say, though, you're in class, right, and you have to answer all these questions about graphs, which you'll have to do next year. It's really helpful to put your totals at the end, right? Sometimes you put the totals here, but it helps me just to do it right after the number, right? So I just do the line right here, so I, it's easy to see where my line is. It's, oh yeah, this only had two, one, two. How many cows did I have? One, two, three, four, five. Good, so I put it right there, right? And how many chicks or chickens? Yeah, three people like chickens best. One, two, three. So I put my line in. I put three there. Right? How many people like sheep best? Just one. And finally, how many people liked horses best? Good. One, two, three, four. Oh, that was a really bad form. My paper messed up. All right. See? So you don't have to, right? Picture graphs don't need them, but when you're answering questions, it's helpful. It's helpful to put the numbers so then it's easy to see. Like if they say, how many people like chickens best? You already did the work. It's easy, three. You don't have to keep counting. And how many people liked horses best? You already did the work, four, right? And if it says, how many people liked horses? and pigs, you go, oh, I know, four plus two is six, right? So writing the numbers helps, but not necessary. All right, so great job on pictographs or picture graphs. You learned so much today, right? You learned that a picture graph, let's review, a pictograph uses pictures to show data that has been collected. Remember, data is just information, right? You've learned that a picture graph or pictograph has lots of important parts and has a title, so I know what my graph is all about, right? Um, it has labels, so I know what were my choices and what data or information did people give me, right? What were their choices? It has pictures, so I can compare without pictures. You can have one. And, of course, it has the key. So I know that each one of these pictures stands for one when I'm trying to look at that data and see who has the most and how many, right, and compare. I need the key to know what each picture stands for. So you did amazing. Go ahead and mwah, mwah, double kiss your rain. I can't think of a horse cheer or a pig cheer. Let's do all of them, right? We're going to do oink, 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 moo, bok, bok, matinee. And they all say you did wonderful. Whoosh. Okay, do it with me. Ready? Oink, oink. Moo, cluck, cluck, ba, nay, <gasps> whoosh, you guys did amazing, I'm so proud of you, I will see you on Monday, have a great weekend, bye-bye.